Okay, for this video, I wanted to cover what are reportable transactions for foreign-owned single-member LLCs that are disregarded entities. Uh, so for those of you that are familiar with this, when you have a disregarded LLC that's owned by a foreign person, the entity must file a Form 5472 every year with a Pro Forma 1120. Now this is, this is required even if the entity doesn't owe any taxes. So it's really just an informational uh, disclosure and return for a lot of LLCs. But uh, the key point here is the form must be filed every year that the LLC has a reportable transaction. It's paper filed or submitted via fax to the IRS. Um, as of 22, there's no e-filing option. Hopefully that'll change because obviously paper filing and fax is a bit uh, outdated. Uh, so it'd be nice if the IRS updated their systems, but who knows when that'll happen. So just to be clear here, Form 5472 can also be filed for U.S. corporations with foreign owners that own more than 25% of the stock. So for example, if we have Frank here and he's a German citizen and he opens a Delaware Corp and owns 100% of the stock, the corporation, Delaware Corporation, is a U.S. tax resident. So it has to file a Form 1120 compute its uh, federal taxable income, pay federal corporate income taxes, um, and then within the 1120, they attach a 5472 to disclose Frank's ownership of the shares, and there's reportable transactions there. What I'm gonna talk about in this video is what are the reportable transactions for a foreign-owned disregarded LLC, okay? So there's a little, there's a little different. So if we look at the Form 5472 in Part 5, they have a section, reportable transactions of a reporting corp that is a foreign-owned U.S. DE or disregarded entity, okay? Now, within that part, it makes this following statement, right? It's pretty clear. It says, describe on an attached separate sheet any other transaction as defined in Reg Section 1.482-1 I-7, such as amounts paid or received in connection with the formation, dissolution, acquisition and disposition of the entity, including contributions to and distributions from the entity. All right, so it's quite a mouthful. What do they mean there? What they are trying to do is they have created a definition so broad, almost every LLC that's a disregarded entity is gonna have a reportable transaction. And I'm gonna give you an example why. Uh, so if we have Frank again, a German citizen, tax resident, opens a Wyoming LLC during 2021. Now, after he opens the entity, he never opens a bank account. He doesn't conduct any business through the activity, so it's effectively dormant, right? And so the question Frank has is, do I still need to file a 5472 for 2021? And the answer is very simply yes, and here's why. When you have the sole owner of a DRE pay for expenses on behalf of the company, that is a deemed contribution to capital to the LLC, right? So it's no different than Frank opening that bank account, putting in money, and then using the funds in that bank account to pay for expenses. In this case, he's paying for expenses on behalf of the entity because they're just coming out of his personal accounts. Those are reportable transactions, right? Because it constitutes a contribution of capital to the entity, okay? So in Frank's example, let's say if we take this Wyoming LLC, if, he's pay, if he personally pays the $102 to open the entity with Wyoming, and then he personally pays the $49 registered agent fee, um, this was necessary, obviously, because the LLC didn't exist, so it couldn't have its own bank account yet to fund these transactions. So those personal payments by Frank on behalf of the entity are deemed capital contributions to the LLC. So that is a reportable transaction. And then also, um, even if we're not looking at capital contributions and distributions, these types of transactions constitute formation costs, right? So like it says up here, right? Any costs in connection with the formation or dissolution of the company. So Frank kind of loses twice here, right? I mean, it's a deemed capital contribution and it's a fee that's incurred in the formation of the LLC itself. So you can clearly see here that Almost every LLC that's set up by a foreign member, even if you don't do anything afterwards, you've got to file the 5472 because you immediately have a reportable transaction. Um, now, hypothetically, let's say this carries on into the second year, the same principle applies, right? If he's not doing anything within the second year, but he still pays 
for that annual um, renewal fee and he pays that annual registered agent fee to keep the entity active, if he's doing so personally, that, that again is another capital contribution. So um, if you're of the mindset that, well, I set up this LLC, but I haven't done anything with it, doesn't matter, right? If you have paid money to get this entity launched or if you pay money to continue to keep the entity up and running and, in, and legally existing under state law, you're gonna have reportable transactions. You need to file the 5472. Okay, so I hope that was helpful and then clarified some uh, open questions. If you have any other questions, leave me a comment below and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.